Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to this Eucharist. I'm coming to you live from the new church in Kargar, Divya Krupa Church, which was inaugurated by His Eminence, Oswald Cardinal Gracious, on the 3rd of April this year. So I'm celebrating the Eucharist for you from this beautiful church in Kargar. So let's begin the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and with your spirit. spirit to prepare ourselves to celebrate this holy mystery we call to mind our sins and so together we say I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in his designs, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? 
he said i have been very jealous for the lord the god of host for the people of israel have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword and i even i only am left and they seek my life to take it away and the lord said to him go return on your way to the wilderness of damascus and when you arrive you shall anoint hazael to be king over syria and jehu the son of nimshi you shall anoint to be king over israel and elisha the son of shafat of abel mehola you shall anoint to be prophet in your place the word of the lord thanks, thanks be, be to god. god our response shall be it is your face o lord that i seek kindly repeat it is your face o lord that i seek o lord hear my voice when i call have mercy and answer me of you my heart has spoken seek his face our response it is your face o lord that i seek it is your face o lord that i seek hide not your face from me dismiss not your servant in anger you have been my help our response it is your face o lord that i seek i believe i shall see the lord's goodness in the land of the living wait for the lord be strong be stout hearted and wait for the lord our response it is your face o lord that i seek kindly rise for the gospel alleluia alleluia you shine as lights in the world holding fast to the word of life alleluia The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, "If you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that any one who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin," tear it out and throw it away for it is better to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into hell if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and throw it away for it is better to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into hell it was also said whoever divorces his wife let him give her a certificate of divorce But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her makes her committed adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery too. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel today my dear brothers and sisters present us with three very important points. The first is about adultery, the second is about committing sin, and the third with regard to to sexual immorality or rather adultery once again or divorce as it is said. I like to focus on the first and the second point rather than all the three points. There's a story told of a of a guruji who was having who was teaching his disciples some asanas, and while he was getting them to jump, he himself was almost floating in the air, and so disciples were stunned and they asked him, "Guru, we are struggling with jumping, and you are floating or rather flying in the air. How is it possible?" and the guru smiled and said fill your minds with lovely thoughts and you'll be able to fly in the air 
In today's gospel, Jesus tells us that if, you're, if you look with lustful thoughts onto anyone, you have committed adultery in your mind with regards to that person. And the only way that you can get out of this is what the Guruji said, fill your minds with lovely thoughts. And the moment you start filling your mind with lovely, positive thoughts, you'll not just be able to fly literally in, in the air, but rather you'll be able to keep yourself away from sin. The second part of today's gospel, Jesus says, if your eye causes you to sin, cut it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it out. Probably the gospel of Matthew is giving us the shorter version of this Imagine what type of a church we would have if all of us actually took this, this teaching of Jesus literally. I mean, there would be many of us without eyes here. There would be half of us without hands. There would be some of us without legs. Rather than the church, this would be more of an hospital. Is this type of church that Jesus wants? No. Then what Jesus is trying to tell us, my dear brothers and sisters, is very simple. Cut off everything that is causing you to sin. Shift it away from your life. Fill your life with positive things. Fill your mind and heart with lovely thoughts and you'll be able to overcome sin. There are many teachings of Jesus that a lot of us find difficult to follow. And the reason that we find difficult to follow is because we don't understand what Jesus is trying to tell us. If we truly put ourselves in the, into the shoes of Jesus and understand what he's trying to tell us, probably his teaching would mean a lot to us. Or rather, we would be able to live our lives more like the way that Jesus wants us to live. Let's pause for a moment and look into our lives. Which is that teaching of Jesus? that I find so difficult to follow. We'll have the offertory. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to goodness of this bread to offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Kindly stand. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this offering of yours and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept a sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For, for our good, good and the good, good of all this holy church. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the vividness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. 
And so the angels and the archangels, the thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sent, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Kindly stand. The mystery of our faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Oswell, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle and all the saints are pleased to throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, as the Savior commanded us, we form, together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are, are yours now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Offer each other some sign of peace. Peace. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This, my dear friends, is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to his celebration. Lord, I am not worthy that he went under my roof. But only say your word, and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O oh Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O oh Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by the same sacrament which it, with which you feed us in this present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This celebration is now ended. You are sent forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
free.